Number 10, Carhenge. There are many major monuments from centuries past sitting all over the world, but for historians of prehistoric Great Britain, there's the one and only Stonehenge. This monument is a wonder in and of itself, and you can't help but think about how it got made. But as the stereotype about Americans goes, we all know people in the United States like to make their own versions of things, and so one man decided to make his own monument called Carhenge. Yes, this is a real thing, and it's composed of abandoned cars, more or less. It was built in the 1980s by a man who wanted to honor his father, who owned land in Alliance, Nebraska. Every car you see at the monument is from the 1950s and 1960s, so in a way, it's a tribute to classic cars. But what is easily the most impressive thing about Carhenge is the logistics of it. After all, it's not called Carhenge because it sort of reminds you of Stonehenge in some ways. It's called that because the creator went to extreme lengths to make sure that every single car used in the monument was perfectly placed to match Stonehenge. To that end, it's a near-perfect replica. The only real difference is one has stones and one uses cars. If you wish to go see Carhenge, you can find it in Nebraska. It may not be a typical sculpture, but you definitely can see it as a form of art of some kind. And no, you can't drive the cars. They've been totally preserved for the sculpture and are not drivable in the slightest. Number nine, the Mustangs of Las Colinas. On the surface, the idea of a set of sculpted horses isn't that odd. And in fact, there are many who would love to visit a beautiful art installation modeled after some of the majestic stallions who were key partners for farmers, ranchers, and soldiers for centuries. But in truth, the Mustangs of Las Colinas are a bit of a curious case. They're weird because they are not just a set of horse statues, but rather a set of a whole lot of horse statues, and they've been designed so you can actually see the water that is being splashed at their feet by hidden jets. These bronze statues are one and a half times bigger than real horses, although in photographs it often seems that they are smaller. They have special fountains built into their feet which shoot out water in such a way as to create the impression that they're galloping through a river. The real question here is, why do it like this? Again, horses are fine for statues, and there are plenty of horse statues all over the world, but why go this big with this set? The answer might be obvious. They are in Texas, land of the cowboys and wild horses. And there's a saying that you simply must know about Texas. As the saying goes, everything is bigger in Texas, it seems, including the horse sculptures. Number eight, the bull fart sculpture. That's right, this is a sculpture where the bull is releasing its gas in order to spur itself like a rocket to attack a defenseless man. Well, the victim deserved it, sort of. Chen Wen Ling's famous sculpture depicts Wall Street as a bull in this piece. The man being attacked is Bernie Madoff, a famous con man who is said to have conducted the biggest financial fraud in the history of the US. If you're missing the point here, the set of statues is basically stating the fact that Madoff got gored by his own greed. Which, if you think about it, is very true. There were multiple times where Madoff could have admitted to his investors that he couldn't get them the returns they wanted and come clean in order to ensure that his company stayed above board. But instead, he kept diving deeper and deeper into fraud until he literally had to confess to his own sons who promptly reported on him to the authorities. While the message is good in its own way, the fact that someone decided to actually make a statue like this is a bit odd. It's a strange statement about Wall Street and the way that people can become excessively greedy to the point of committing crimes. Of course, the setting is important here, as this is a statue that can be currently found in Beijing, and China doesn't have the best relationship with the US. So in many ways, it's possible that this was made to make fun of the country that allowed a con man like Madoff to get away with so much before he was finally caught. Of course, if you look at some of this artist's other work, you'll see that the general theme is one of strange, surreal scenes. This artist really wants to go to extremes to make social commentary in a very bizarre way. Number seven, upside down statue. 
If you were just another moderately successful person who wanted to commission a statue of yourself and you wanted to be remembered, this strategy might be one for you. Charles Latrobe was born in London in 1801. After a period of global gallivanting that included ascents in the Alps and a trip to Mexico with Washington Irving, he was eventually sent to Australia to help administer the various colonies of the British Empire. Despite a lack of experience, he was appointed as the first lieutenant governor of the colony of Victoria, established in 1851. Latrobe was an enlightened gentleman and a strong supporter of cultural and educational institutions, and did much to improve the colonial capital of Melbourne. He even went on to make many key landmarks in the city, including a major hospital. So it might surprise you to learn that in terms of how he's remembered, it's not that good. If you research him, he's been labeled as an ineffectual leader, which is odd because he did manage to get these impressive buildings put up. And yes, as the governor of the colony, the man was blessed to be depicted in two statues. One of those statues is, as you might expect, upside down. At first, one could think this was because of the lack of enthusiasm his subjects held for this gentleman as a leader. But ironically, that's not the case with this statue. Rather, the statue is one that was meant to defy the standard of statues being put in a right-side-up pose. And ironically, it worked. Because after getting all sorts of attention, people started to wonder who Charles Latrobe was and why he deserved such a thing. His legacy gained a high profile because his statue was so bizarre. But even with that, it's still a very odd statue, wouldn't you say? If you had a statue made of yourself, what would you want on it to make it special? Would you try to make it funny or serious? And would you put it upside down? Tell me your thoughts in the comments below. Then remember to subscribe to The Biggest if you haven't already for more strange and funny videos just like this one. Number six, the land swimmer. A partially buried giant that looks like it's swimming through the grass? Well, sort of. It's certainly weird and not at all something you would expect to see even in a modern art exhibit. Located on the south bank of the River Thames in London, this 46-foot-long and 10-foot-tall sculpture was built courtesy of the reality show London Inc. And to be frank, that explains quite a lot about this particular piece, wouldn't you say? When you contemplate London as a whole and all that it has to offer, you tend to think of all the monuments and historical places that you can go and visit. Now imagine thinking about all that high-class art and architecture, and then you suddenly come across this. It would be a bit jarring, wouldn't you say? So that's why it makes perfect sense that a reality show would go and do this, because only a reality show would think that something like this would be a good thing. Think about it like this. Pretend you didn't know that this piece was called the Land Swimmer. What would you think upon looking at this statue? Probably that it was of a full human but somehow got partly buried, right? Exactly. The idea of the Land Swimmer is honestly very ludicrous because it's basically part of a statue that makes no sense unless you know what it's supposed to depict. Yes, art is subjective and open to interpretation, but it's also true that art is supposed to truly mean something, and that's hard to come by with this piece. Number 5. Traffic Light Tree Here's another one from the UK that is just odd to think about. Designed by Pierre Vivant, Traffic Light Tree has 75 sets of traffic lights. The sculpture was created to mimic a tree structure and reflect the energy of the developing Canary Wharf area. Of course, while you can respect something that is meant to reflect energy and potentially help an area gain tourism revenue, you can't help but look at this and be absolutely perplexed. After all, ask yourself, how was this thing approved as a legitimate art installation? Think about it from this perspective. When you're driving in an unfamiliar city area, the last thing you want to encounter is a spot with a lot of traffic lights, right? It's not likely to be a spot you'll be comfortable driving around in because there will be traffic, aggressive drivers, and the risk of someone running a red light and causing an accident. So, putting all of these together is basically a reminder of every driver's struggle. And who wants to be forced to view that on a daily basis? Number 4. The Naked Buddhas 
There are all sorts of Buddha statues all over the world, including one in China that stands almost 300 feet tall, as well as weighing around 700 tons. Now that's a lot of Buddha. But also in China, an eatery decided to make a really curious addition to their housing by building naked Buddha statues around it. One of these statues is depicted as actually trying to climb the building itself. Not surprisingly, after some protests due to religious views, the statues were taken down. But not before they were fully built and people could take pictures of these incredibly odd things. Number 3. The Wedding Rings Giant rings sticking out of the ground? It's probably not your average sculpture. One of the most unusual attractions in Vancouver, these rings are made from steel, aluminum, and glass. They stick out of the ground at an angle, as though they're about to fall over. However, in reality, they are both firmly stuck in the ground, a symbol of the strength of love. Now, objectively, that is a really nice thing to try to symbolize. But you have to admit that there must have been other ways for an art installation to express that kind of thing, right? It seems like an awfully convoluted way to make that point, and it couldn't have been easy to put up. Plus, if you look at them, at points they don't really look like wedding rings. But there they are. Number 2. Vomiting Fountain Sculpture And now, for the why in the world does this exist sculpture that's likely to shock people with certain sensibilities. In case you didn't know, in London there is indeed a sculpture of a man that is vomiting, and they've rigged it up so that there is water coming out of his mouth at all times. Seriously, why does this exist? This isn't your grandfather's art, and some would call this almost vile. Throwing up is no fun. Anyone who's ever done it will know that, and yet someone decided to make a statue that reminds everyone of that feeling. It's hard to understand why the artist was inspired to put this piece together. And here's another thing to think about. This not only had to get made, it had to be approved by the city and installed so that the water fountain could be hooked up. So that means someone in the government didn't think this was even a bad idea. Wow. Number 1. Giant Pink Bunny of Artesina There are some things that just go and defy explanation, logic, reasoning, and just plain common sense. And in Italy, you'll find a sculpture like that in the form of the Giant Pink Bunny of Artesina. Hase, also known as the Giant Pink Bunny, is a gigantic art installation that lies on the green foliage of the Coletto Fava Mountain in northern Italy. The 200 foot long and 20 foot high bunny was placed on the hill in 2005 by art collective Gelatin from Vienna. But wait, there's more. Not only is it a giant pink bunny sculpture, it's one that has had its guts spilled out on the side for all to see. And obviously those guts are rather huge. So what in the world is the intent of this piece of art? Well, it's meant to represent a classic scene from Gulliver's Travels. Granted, there are all sorts of references to classic literature all over the world, but this might be a bit much. Not to mention, the statue was meant to last 20 years, but it's likely not going to make it, because not only has it turned gray, it's literally rotting on the Italian hill it lies on. So, if you have odd tastes and you're aiming to go and see this thing, you'll probably want to do it before it's all gone. That said, it probably won't be missed when it's gone. Just saying. Thanks for watching, everyone. What did you think of this look at bizarre statues and sculptures? Which of these immediately caught your eye? Which ones do you feel are just a bit too out there, even for you? Let me know in the comments below. Be sure to subscribe, and I'll see you next time on The Biggest.